right, welcome back, gang, for another episode of Watch Rob. I'm here at Store 5A in Columbus, Ohio. Uh, authentic, pre-owned luxury. From watches to diamonds, purses, anything you could want. Uh, they have two locations in the Short North as well as at Easton Market. Visit Store5A.com. Now, I'm here with an awesome comparison video between two brands, Audemars Piguet and Rolex. And uh, one, let's see, the first big difference I have here with me is that this is a steel sports watch and this is a solid gold sports watch. But the reason these are both here regardless of gold or steel is that they're both pre-owned in a similar price range and they're both for sale. So I wanted to do a comparison video between Audemars Piguet as a brand and Rolex as a brand and just display two pre-owned pieces that you can acquire for around the exact same price. So let's break it down. Are you going to choose the Audemars Piguet or are you going to choose the Rolex? That's up to you. So I'm going to start off with the Audemars Piguet. Quick wristwatch check with my Rolex Datejust just like we saw in the Submariner video. So what we have here is actually a very, very rare uh, version of a Royal Oak. So this is one of these model numbers that's really hard to come across. And uh, you're just really not gonna see it very often. It's pretty sweet. We have the date pointed all the way, all the way around, which is pretty common with uh, horology that's kind of at the higher end like uh, JJ Lecoute and uh, Patek and people like that. So that's one nice thing that's different. Usually on the Royal Oak you have a date window over here on the side just like with the Rolex. We also have in between the 5 and 6 p.m. location we have a month indicator so you're having the day and the month uh, complications on here as well as your typical time frame so that alone is really cool just to have that but let's go ahead and I'll take off my Rolex and I will show you what this looks like on the wrist and I mean honestly this is just so cool um, to be able to come in here and wear a piece like this even if it's for a five minute video you know I'm just blown away so I'll quit geeking out and I'll continue this is uh, first of all let's just get out of the way the fact that the quality and finish on an Audemars Piguet is usually going to be miles ahead of what you have on a Rolex for example they were basically the first luxury real luxury steel uh, watch like the real high-end they're basically the first company that was able to sell a steel only sport watch not gold not white gold not rhodium or or anything like that it's just steel and they can still <laughs> command the same price as an 18 karat solid gold watch so that alone should already blow your mind and I'll go over what the differences are in the watches that is going to command that price even though this isn't a rare metal so with steel let's see like I said the fit and finish you can see here the bezel around here it's a fixed bezel not a rotating obviously like a dive timer would have um, it has the screws into the bezel a brush finishing along the front and then a very very fine polished beveling around the edge and that continues until surprise when you go to the exact side it's actually brushed once again so they didn't just polish it and then bring the polish all the way around which certainly would have been easier they took the time by hand with the help of machining tools of course but primarily by hand in Switzerland they took the time to brush the front then polish the sides then brush the outer edge of that and this is just on one portion of the watch they repeat these kind of extra mile techniques all over the piece um, all over the bracelet let's look right here the the actual shape of the case is really interesting it's very cool they've kept this sort of shape with the sharp angles uh, almost the same since the original Royal Oak that they uh, made in the 70s. 
Let's see here on the back, you can see the Royal Oak. If I can get the clasp out of the way, there we go. So here we have, um, I'm not gonna make myself sound stupid and try to pronounce that in the correct dialect, but you can read it and you can try at home. Um, it's a screw in on the case back. It's held in with these screws here and is actually a limited edition here. We have the number uh, 273. Uh, on this specific model, I am not up to date or current with knowing how many exact pieces were made, but this is limited edition, which also justifies the price a little more. Here's the crown on it. Right there it says AP. Engraved in and on the crown we have the brushing up and down here, but then a small beveling in between each little octagonal cut. So that's just such fine detail. It's so fine I, I probably can't get it to be picked up on my camera. You can kind of see the reflection on each edge of these sides on the crown. And that's about the closest you're going to be able to see on my camera here. But up close with the naked eye in the right lighting, it's just something that blows you away. Another thing about detail with AP, their dials have just about the most detail without being busy or looking overcomplicated. And a lot of these things are done uh, with a combination of machine and still by hand by professionals. Um, we're going to see a lot of these APs have the raised hour markers, which is standard. They're applied hour markers, so they go on after the dial has initially been created. and we may not be able to see, I don't have a macro lens, but the background where you see all these little textile squares on the dial, these are actually raised and have patterns. I don't think I can pick it up on here, but all of these Royal Oaks, they feature dials with this uh, square patterning across that's repeated. And if you could zoom in on a macro far enough you'd actually be able to see that there's cross etching across the tops of these squares and in between every cube to make this crazy pattern that you see here. And that's just a level of finishing that is not going to be seen on almost any other watch regardless of where you are in the world. So this is most of what we have here for the AP. I'm going to put it on the wrist just to show you guys. And this is not a jumbo or anything like that. With the clasp, we're going to push down here and slide in. So this is not a jumbo. Um, I did not measure this before the video, but this looks to be like the 39 millimeter case diameter model. Uh, if you think I'm incorrect, please feel free to comment in the uh, below the video there. I welcome any comments so we can all learn together because this is such a great hobby. Um, it looks great with a dress shirt here, even uh, barrel cuffed, French cuff, anything you're wearing it with. And all in all, it really is a sports watch, so this is something that you can rock with jeans and a t-shirt, or I guess what people call leisure wear, kind of active wear nowadays is very popular uh, when you're going out. So that's something that you can wear as well with that. So I'll put this down. Now we're going to go on to Rolex. So we already talked earlier about dial finishing. So I'm going to start with the finishing on the dial. So what Rolex does really well is they have a beautiful sunburst effect on a lot of their date, uh, day date, date just type watches. They uh, bring this onto the no date oyster perpetual watches as well that now recently come in grape colored dials, blue dials, things like that. But don't get me wrong, it does have a really great attention to detail. It again has applied hour marker indices just like on the AP. They're raised up. You can see this has a sapphire crystal. And again, this is 18 karat solid gold. Um, in my eyes, that's kind of as a status symbol. It's hard to get much better than wearing solid gold and it's really heavy too. Um, I'm gonna have to go home and work out some more next time before I handle one of these. So very cool. Um, with something like this, this is more of a vintage Rolex, just this item we have in store today. Um, so you have a lot of really cool details on this like bark gold in the mid links and then polished gold on the outer links. 
and that's continued on the bezel. Typically, these are a fluted bezel. It has a bark on the bezel to match with the links. And I'm not gonna lie, I just think it's absolutely fantastic. As far as complications go, we have a date and a day and then your normal time. Does not go quite as extensive as telling you what month it is. But you know, unless you're coming out of a coma, I'm hoping that you know what month it is. <laughs> That's just kind of a cool factor for AP to have that. So um, then we have almost like a hidden clasp. Other than that crown, it just looks like continuous links, which is really cool. I'm gonna pop this on the wrist. And it's 18 karat yellow gold, solid, and the ring that I'm wearing is solid 18 karat yellow gold as well. So if I can get them both in the shot, here's the watch, then here's the ring. You can see they do match pretty well. And if you want to go out, maybe you have a uh, 18 karat yellow wedding band, and then pick up the solid gold day date. You can't go wrong with that. You'd walk in the office, and everyone's jaw is going to drop. So. Uh, real quick rundown before I end the video, the big differences here, uh, the price, you're going to get usually more rare metals with Rolex for the same price that you're going to pay to have a steel Audemars Piguet. Uh, the movements, although Rolex movements are very, very good, AP in almost every class of model range, their movements are usually a, slightly a step above. Um, in many ways, you know, they're thinner movements typically as you can see uh, you see how thick this watch is on the Rolex and then see how thin they were able to make the case with all of these complications. It's still this thin. Uh, that's just another thing with fine horology that you'll see from AP and people like uh, JJ Lecoute, Vacheron Constantin, and Patek Philippe. So that wraps it up for me today. I hope I helped any of you make a decision on which watch to buy. And if not, I hope you guys at least got some good education out of this and enjoyed the video. So please uh, like and subscribe to the YouTube channel, drop a comment, and visit store5a.com. Thank you.